Hello everyone. If you haven't been to my channel before, I am a digital artist. Nice to meet you. Thank you for watching. GIMP is a free-to-use application that gives you full control over what you want to draw. In my opinion, it is one of the best digital drawing applications for starting artists out on, one that is basically Adobe without all the payments and fees. It is also easy to get to know and use, as I have taught myself how to use GIMP a few years ago on my own. To start out, you want to have your tablet set up and ready to go. Personally, I use a Gaumon PD150. It wasn't super expensive, it still had the screen, and it had buttons on the side, so I thought it would be easier to start on than with no screen. Mine cost $410 brand new, but it was very worth it. First, you want to open GIMP. Make a new canvas, clicking here on File, or using your keyboard. Hit Ctrl N. I usually make mine 2000 by 2500 or whatever I feel like. I have a weird screen that doesn't fit the normal 1920 by 1080. What you want to do next is create a blank layer on top of the background. Don't just draw on the white background because then you will have to erase the white behind your sketch and it will look messy. Title this layer sketch, line art, or color, or whatever you want to make sure you know what you're drawing on with these layers. Just a heads up. Layers do get mixed up fast, so you don't want to title it Sketch 1 or Sketch 2 because you're going to have a lot of them. Going over to the left side, you'll see a bunch of stuff that doesn't quite matter yet. Select the paintbrush tool, not the pencil tool, for a cleaner, smoother brush. The thing you want to focus on is the size of the brush. The size you want will depend on what you're drawing and how big the canvas is. For example, my 2500 by 2000 canvas, I will use a size 10 brush for sketching. Probably one of the most important tools to remember is the Ctrl Z button. Using Ctrl Z will undo the millions of mistakes that will happen to every artist. Get very familiar with that one. The zoom tool is almost as important as the undo tool. Going up to view, and then down to zoom, will let you select the percentage you want to go in or out. The higher the number, the more you'll zoom in. Here's a small tip. If you have a very detailed drawing, only zoom into it 100%, as it is basically as much as the normal viewer will look into it. Doing a ton of small details at 200% is much less likely to be seen. Using the fit image window will let you see the entire canvas. Don't forget to stop and look at it for a few minutes before continuing the drawing. Taking a step back can let you see what you need to change or flip. Speaking of flipping your canvas, here's how you can do that. Going back to view, go down and to flip and rotate. There, you will find all the options to flip your canvas. If the balance or symmetry is off, you can see this using flip or rotate. One of my biggest issues I have with GIMP is when you fill with the bucket tool. It leaves weird transparent dots that you can see what your background is. I have figured out several ways to fix this. First, you can just use your normal brush to go over the transparent dots. It takes longer, but overall you get the same result. Second, you could use the smudge tool. This can be messier to use, and I would recommend using the brush tool first. Third, you could try double clicking with your brush. This will leave smooth edges rigidy and will force similar colors surrounding it to also be the color you are bucket filling. I wouldn't recommend this if you don't want to erase, don't have line art to cover the ridges, or have similar colors touching on the same layer. I personally use all three, and it takes more time, but it's alright and I get the same exact thing in the end. To make your layer smaller or bigger, use the transform or scale tool. The scale tool is much easier to use and it automatically selects the edges whereas the transform tool can make it messy. I wouldn't use the warp tool until you are comfortable with the transform tool, and even I don't use it quite yet. I mentioned the smudge tool earlier. The smudge tool blends everything together. This is the only smudge tool on GIMP that I use to blend colors. Using alpha lock on the right side next to your layers will allow you to blend without going outside the lines of what you already drawn. As I mentioned earlier, the smudge tool blends everything together. 
This is the only smudge tool on GIMP that I use to blend colors. Using alpha lock on the right side next to your layers will allow you to blend without going outside the lines of what you've already drawn. You will not be able to erase while this is on, but it is useful for shading and blending similar colors together. The select tool is very easy to use, but unfortunately it requires an extra step to actually use it. Click select, then trace or tap around your art. If you want to select multiple layers, they will need to be combined. Cut or copy, then paste to move the art selected. It will be pasted on a new layer, so to lower it, hit this down button on the layers channel. When wanting to change the opacity of the layer, you find it here. If you want to change the opacity of the brush, you find it on the box on the left. Just a tip, don't put your line art brush at 50% opacity because you will see the layer beneath it in your lines, like when you color. Only do this if it is a sketch. Kim's brushes are alright, a few of them are kind of weird but you can find free brushes all over DeviantArt and other programs. If you are willing to pay, nearly all brushes work in GIMP, as long as you put them in the right folder. You can also find free ones. There are videos you can watch by other YouTubers to find out how to do it. The color balancing is amazing in GIMP, mostly because GIMP is mainly used for image editing. Finding the right colors to put on your finished colored pieces is simple, with all the balancing available. Here are some GIMP tips I think everyone should know. It takes a while to get used to an art program, so if you're getting frustrated with GIMP, give it about half a month and then try another program. Here are a few that I suggest. Adobe. It's a lot monthly and yearly, but it's one of the best out there. Procreate. It's on tablet only, and Apple, and it's only a one-time payment, but it's one of the best also. Krita is free to use and a lot like GIMP, but I would even say a little bit better because it has animation and Fire Alpaca. I don't know too much about it, but I do know that it's free. Finally, if you're missing anything on your GIMP application, go up into Windows, then go up to Dockable Dialogs, and it will show anything that is hidden. If you need to find layers, for example, click here and open it. GIMP has a simple layout, it's easy to use, and it's a lot like Adobe without any of the payments. I feel like it should be used more often for new digital artists because of the accessibility. Hi everyone, thank you for watching! This took a while to put together, but I think it'll be worth it for all the people who will be using this. Use the email down below to submit your art, and I will be featuring it in the next video! Thank you so much!